suicidal, so suicidal. So I called the insurance company, actually, um, uh, called the insurance company, and they said that before they could take me, I had to see a therapist. Well, I'd never seen a therapist in my life, you know, of all Even the people through, that needed one. I was going to say, through all your suffering, you never did that? No. 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 Okay. My ego was too huge. Okay. And uh, for it to even occur to me. And, um, you know, like, I can fix this. But, but you know, here I am. And um, at the time, so I went to see this, like, this uh, therapist. So she could say, yes, this woman is obese. She can, you know, she... Go to the place. Yeah, she can know. get treatment. You can pay your insurance. Yeah, right. So um, I walked in, and she was a the therapist for me. I, I, you know, I can just see her. I walked in. She had a cigarette in one hand. <laughs> she had all the you know candy bars on the on on her desk. Mm. I mean, it was she she had Coke. You know, I mean some some pharmaceutical kind of version oh, of that. Oh, you boy. mean soda Coke? Yeah, yeah. She just her, her she was full of addiction herself. Oh, you know, it it. I would you know I'd look good to me. Yeah, I'll tell you something yeah. about it. Right. And I thought, oh, you know, I just feel it so at home home with her and so we had this really frank talk and she said let me tell you you need help you really need help and your insurance company does not cover the kind of help you need and she started talking like on uh, like drug addiction alcohol and I thought, you know she really doesn't get me <laughs> you know all of a sudden we're off that same page but on um, but you thought I, she didn't get you because you thought that didn't apply to you? Oh, that didn't apply to me. No. My goodness. Right. Um, I needed to lose weight. And, that was it. And then I'm fine. Yeah. So, um, uh, and because then I wouldn't be depressed. Mm. Then I wouldn't. That was know, the magic pill. That was the magic pill. Lose weight, your life is fine. Mm -hmm. So she, um, uh, she said, you know, it, the hospital won't take you. And, um, but there is, um, because of the insurance the type of insurance I had. But she said, there is this little halfway house, and uh, I'll see if, you know, at that time, she said, I'll start calling around and see if I can find a place for it. Well, it turned out to be an, like a uh, halfway house for eating disorders. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I thought, good, you know. So um, I, I went, you know. I, I, and did I you go my, willingly? Oh, you know, terrified and very willingly. And it was the Very first worthy. time you had ever sort of reached out for help, and the help that you got yeah. happened to be kind of the one that you needed. Yeah, yeah, I thought. Okay. And, um, and yeah, yeah, so it was just, it was, and it was terrifying, you know, because what do they do in places like that? You know, those other people are there, you know, and, and um, so, um, and I considered myself one of the kindest people in the world. You did. And, oh, my God, I was so full of rage when crossed you know just self-hatred that's what it looks like yeah so i um i love talking to you rosie well you know it's very mutual i feel like i've known you my whole life yeah. it's a very i have to tell you it's very odd because i really you know it, when reading and watching you and you said how people would see you and see how you are and say i want to come live with you and you would say okay mm -hmm. i feel like if you said okay i would go live with you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't know it's a hard thing to yeah. it's a very emotional thing yeah. i feel myself I don't. I don't quite understand why. Well, you know, it's what I would say. See, I feel that way about me too. So it would be like, um, it would be like, there's a there. It's like you are here. It's your very self you're looking at. It's like all of your understanding, that understanding within you, is coming out of this mouth, and. It's the same. It's the same. It's articulated. Your, your heart articulated. And it's, it's like that. So you're in this halfway house. You're okay. with these people. And are I, you following what they're saying? Are you doing their quote-unquote program or whatever they were proselytizing? You know, I am. Okay. And, and you're committed to it? Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm committed to it. I didn't know it, but I have an expression that runs today, just follow the simple direction. So that's what I was doing. And um, so, again, you know, I thought I was just the nicest person in the world. And they had trouble accepting me. They, I learned like a year later that the women there 
were afraid of me, mm. and um, they all voted not to have me there. Wow. And um, they said, someone came to bat for me, and um, um, they said the only way that they would stay in a house with me is if they put me in this, like, attic room at the top, and then I learned, I learned this like a year later, also that they put all kinds of noisemakers, like like stuff that if I stepped on, it would fall down the staircase, wake them up. And so warn night. them that you were coming. Yeah. Now, what was it they were afraid of? You know, just They just saw me as a violent person. As rageful. Mm -hmm. And you have said over and over, victims mm -hmm. are violent people. Victims are violent people. They're violent towards themselves, mm -hmm. and they're violent towards others. They have to be. That's what self-hatred, uh, that's what self-hatred is. You know, it's like, I am going to, I am going to that self-hatred's got to come out. It's got to be pointed at you. And it's how the mind works. It's, it's, it's like if you say something that, does, that threatens what I'm believing. You put up defense. A defense. And also, defense is the first act, act of, of war. war. Right. See, yeah. I've been listening. Yeah. I could quote all your stuff. There, and there's some beautiful things people have made, which I don't know if you're, you've seen on YouTube, where quotes of yours just put to music. Oh. There's really kind of, and they're very succinct. There's not a lot of dogma attached to yeah. it. It's sort of like, well, listen, here it is. Yeah. This is what has worked for me and mm -hmm. brought me peace, and mm -hmm. this is available to you should you want to do the work. Yeah. Yeah, and I love it. You know, and if Everyone, anyone can do the work if their mind is open to it. Anyone. And that's How did your mind become open to it? You talk about a mind hit, right? Or a mind slam. So you're, you're in the... Did, one more question about the halfway house. Did you, did you think you were frightening? Did, were oh, you aware no. that you were scaring them? My God, no. You know, I just thought there was something wrong with them. It certainly wasn't me. Were you acting out in a way that could be interpreted as... Zero zero to my mind and they saw me as as the extreme opposite of my own experience with myself i was so open-minded i was so kind i was so and they saw me as this violent person it's it's i have no idea what i was saying and doing all i know is that i had an, a facade running that i had no clue about and you know, it's like I was the last to know. So eventually, um, on one morning, as I lay um, asleep on the floor. There at the halfway house? Yeah. And how long were you there? Do you remember? Um, was it a long time? Well, I flunked. You know, they, they, <laughs> I, I didn't make the program. You did? And, no, because I had this experience and um, about... Uh, Two two and a half weeks in, in, and um, and I just lost all reference. For um, you had the experience of the mind slam, the mind. Yeah. Okay, so you're lying on the floor in the halfway house because you didn't feel worthy of a bed. Yeah. And a cockroach crawls across your foot, mm -hmm. and then you, right then at that moment, have what you've described as a mind hit or a mind slam. Mm -hmm. I that's the only thing I don't fully understand. Okay. And Will it happen to me if I do the work? <laughs> Is this something that can happen to anyone? What I see happening to people, like what appears to be uh, happened just immediately with me, wasn't. It's, you know, I don't call it the work for nothing. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is, it was this major slam, you know, this, 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 this shift of mind. But it, it's, it wasn't enough. But what I see, what appears to have happened to me in an instant, I watch happening to people, millions and millions of people all over this planet now that are doing the work. Their, their minds shift, and it looks like time. You understand? It, yeah, it, it looks it, like a shift. Right. It looks like people, people, mind creates the illusion of time. So it looks like people do the work, and in time, um, they see these miraculous shifts taking place in them and it's not enough and it's not enough so it you know again it's it's a i invite people to, to question what they're believing as a daily practice right and um so to my mind the same thing is happening but people people see in time like for example 
uh, the mind will, the thought, you know, I, I am, I am Byron Katie, I am Byron Katie with three children, the whole universe is created. Right. And believing those thoughts create time and place and, and even, well, our whole, our, our whole being it's it's like people say, uh, what is your name? And I say, Byron Katie. It's what's on the birth certificate, Byron Kathleen. So I'll say, Byron Katie, but just don't ask me if I believe it or not. Right. You know, so it's, it's on, on, if I, it's like when I believed it, I became a, a being with, with, um, with a story that goes along with that name, right? Yes. Where, where you are really some spiritual present that mm-hmm. is encased in a body mm-hmm. for this, whatever is perceived mm-hmm. lifetime, to learn or to evolve to another level. Mm-hmm. Which we can do here. While you're incarnate, you can yes. do it. Yes. And I thought that, that you know, during those, those, those dark, dark uh, years, that, that death was the solution. Yeah. But then you would be free. Pain. You would be free. Then I would right. be free. Yeah. But no one told me that you didn't have to die of the body to get free. Mm. See, I see earth as, you know, I'll use the word like heaven right. or paradise. Right. But I like to say if you, if you, um, you die, and like you're, you live on earth and you, you die. Yes. And then you wake up in heaven. Yes. Where there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no disease. There's, there's more than you need. Everyone cares about everyone and everything. It's perfect. It's perfect. And, but the only problem is. You're dead. Well, the only problem is you take what you're believing on earth with you. Yeah. So where are you? You know, you're on heaven, you're on earth, you know, and some of us um, from where we came from, you know, I called it hell. So I found a way out. You know, I was gifted. That's what it feels a like. Way out. You were gifted as if mm-hmm. some sort of presence mm-hmm. touched you with a magic mm-hmm. wand and you were, like kind of went, wow, this is it. I get it. But it wasn't rosy. It was like it was it was like it was like better than that. It was. Better than that. So can, can you explain the feeling of it? Like the cockroach goes on your foot and you look at the cockroach and you think or you, you, you think I'm not going to buy in to the illusion of my thoughts anymore? No. Or you just simply knew that, that what you were seeing was not real? What happened was there was it, it was like, um, again, I love talking to you. It's just, I don't know how weird this sounds to people, but it's you. So, you know, it's just so simple to do. But it was like some kind of awareness. You know, I can call it that in hindsight. But some kind of awareness that was looking out of two holes, like out of the eyes, just looking out of two holes. And it was like like this, an, like a motor, like a like a... A motor running with no sound. It was, it was just amazing. And it looked out and, and there was no identification for anything. Not only what it was, but nothing. And then all of a sudden, the mind hit. It, it's so, you know, the, the, um, a way of visualizing it would be like the mind came from nowhere and it hit. And then all of a sudden, everything had a name. And then I saw that it was the thought that created the world and the words for and, the world. And had you not thought that before? Had you had a spiritual study before that, you know, uh, that presented this sort of concept to you that it is a shared reality? We believe this table exists because nothing. We all agree on it. Nothing. I'm just raising my children trying to pay the bills trying to keep the family together and and, and trying to alleviate your suffering with drinking and yeah, food and yeah, you're so, not really thinking so uh, so it's almost like the computer of you was rebooted that's right that's very good never heard that that's right it was just rebooted so um i saw and